Welcome to Taste Then Drink. I'm John O'Hersey. I'm the wine buyer for the French Wine Centre. And tonight we are looking at uh, Domaine Maxime du Bois Boyau. His uh, Volnay Ludi Sur Roche. We're going to be pairing it with a classic Pinot Noir pairing, duck. Now, it's supposedly supposed to be duck with gooseberry. Uh, however, I don't know if anyone's tried to buy gooseberry in Adelaide before, but it's near on impossible. So we're going to adapt and we're going to use grapes. And to make up for the lack of acidity that would get in the gooseberry, we are going to use a little bit of white wine and a little bit more lemon juice. So let's crack on. Now, before we get started on the wine, we are going to just get the sauce on so we can get it reducing. So a saucepan, a touch of water, leave it there just in case you need some more, 50 grams of white sugar, the white wine straight away because we want to burn that off. Now, a little bit of lemon zest. Be quite liberal, might as well. Can always add some more in. But the, the grapes that we've got are beautiful and small and sweet and actually quite sort of phenolically ripe instead of just being sort of big and plump and crisp. So they've got this lovely sort of flavour, but they are a little bit sweeter because of it. So put the rest of that in. Now, a little squeeze of lemon juice, that's probably enough. Right, so not much yet. A little bit of sweetness, a little bit of citrus, that's about it. It's always a little bit harder to smell when the wine's burnt off when we're using so much sugar. Now, so, while we wait for that to reduce, let's have a little look at the wine. So in previous weeks, we've looked at a couple of wines together, but I thought, just turn that down a touch. For a special wine like this, uh, that comes from a particular Ludi in a special village like Volnay, uh, it's probably best that we just give it all of the attention. Right, so now we've got the uh, initial ingredients in just reducing down to a bit more of a syrup. We're going to put 200 grams of grapes in. We're also going to put a touch more water. Now that's now off the boil so we're going to bring it back to the boil. Now this is come back Now, remove the grapes and the sauce. Oh, there we go. Have a little bit of a taste, just for interest's sake. It's really quite nice. Lovely amount of lemon. Quite sweet, but not too sweet. Actually, and I'll have a little go of the grape just for And the grapes are warm, but the grapes actually lose quite a bit of their um, sweetness. I'm not sure, maybe because of the sugar and the, uh, the lemon juice. But anyway, let's get this back on. Now, we want about 75 ml of red wine. About that. We can put more in and we can just reduce it down. But I'm going to need some more. Oop, that bottle was full. Now, so chicken stock. 75 ml of chicken stock. Let's just turn this up a bit. Bring to the boil, turn down and let it reduce. All the while enjoying the wine. Now, while we wait for the red wine and the chicken stock to reduce, Let's talk a little bit about uh, Maxime du bois -Boyau. Then while we cook the duck, we'll talk a little bit about Volnay and the vineyard of Sir Roche. So Maxime du bois -Boyau, 
Uh, not only is it an incredibly difficult yet incredibly fun name to say once you master it, not that I master it, but can say it without fumbling, um, he is of a long line of uh, Vinrons. So Boyo, particularly in Merso and Volne, which are neighbouring villages, have a lot of Boyos. Uh, his grandfather was probably the most famous of uh, his family, so Pierre Boyo. Now, uh, his family are quite traditional in the way they farm, and Maxime wanted to express more of the vineyards. So take a bit more of an organic and a bit of a, a hands-off uh, approach to the way he farms, but also in the, uh, the carve as well, in the winery. So this is actually his first vintage. He has two vineyards uh, presently, uh, Sir Roche, which we're drinking tonight, and Carrel sur la chapelle which is a premier crew just uh, beneath the road. Now, Volne uh, is split up into four sort of areas which produce sort of distinct wines. So Carrel sur la chapelle shares a sort of a limestone oolite sort of strip, which actually comes down from um, a, a Mercer vineyard, uh, Premier Cru Lacar, which we bring in with Domaine Brosson Charles. And it's funny because that the, the red wine that he makes and the white wine that uh, Domaine Brosson Charles actually share a very similar structure uh, and from that same sort of strip of uh, limestone oolite. Um, now, we will get back to this because this is reducing and then we'll talk about more about uh, Volnay. Okay. Righto, now the red wine and the chicken stock has reduced quite a bit. We've tasted the... Uh, White wine, grapes, and the sugar with the lemon juice and lemon zest. Really quite sweet and beautiful. Balances itself out really quite well. This is bitter um, and a uh, good amount of acidity. So you can really see how they're going to go together quite nicely. So let's just go into this without making a fool of myself, I think, hopefully. So. Everything is back together. Give that a stir. That won't take long to get back to the, the boil. Two teaspoons, two it was supposed to be two tablespoons, so let's do a couple of these. Now this is honey from bees which live half of the year on our property, live off the red gums. Now we're just gonna go two of these. If it ever gets off my spoon. Oh, don't you biggies. There we go. Right up. Rinse that off. Now, of course, the John O'Hersey secret ingredient, 50 grams of butter. Let's give it a smell. Beautiful. Instead of having an overpowering sort of sweetness or bitterness, it's just met in the middle. And the butter's brought it all together as, uh, as butter does. So let's wait a bit and I'll see you soon. So Volne is located in the Cote de Bone of the Cote d'Or. It's also known as Burgundy proper, where the, the really serious wines are in Burgundy. So northern, you've got Cote de Nuit, southern, you've got Cote de Bone. Now, um, to simplify things, a lot of people say, ah, oh, Cote de Nui red wine, uh, Cote de Bone white wine. Uh, uh, to, to an extent, true in terms of the most famous villages and vineyards. However, Volnay and Pomar, so Pomar is the village just to the north of Volnay, also on the Cote de Bone, are the two only villages in the whole of Burgundy which uh, only produce red wine. Now, uh, between Volnay and Pomar, there has always been a bit of a historical sort of back and forth in terms of what's popular, who people like, you know, the, the quality of the wine has gone up and down and all around. Now, Volne, yes, uh, is probably a better uh, red wine village and for a lot of history has been renowned as much finer wines. But historically, it's actually been known as um, a very, very light uh, Pinot Noir and also doesn't uh, last long. So you know, go back 500 years where they didn't have bottles and everything was sold by cask and, you know, wine was very fragile. Uh, the wine would last uh, 12, months or if there was a he uh, 12 months if there was a heat wave and 24 if it was quite cool over the summer. Whereas Pomar to the north, which is less popular now because of its rusticity and, uh, you know, um, um, 
some quite sort of big tannins and firm sort of wines that can lack um, uh, finesse, uh, would last through those heat waves. So they would last 36 to 48 months, uh, maybe a, bit, a little bit less if there's a couple of years of heat waves in, in between there. So Volno, uh, if you're looking south, let's say from Merceau or Pulini Monarchet, you'll see this little bit of hill come out from the, the coat, so the slope, the coat d'or, and that is Volno. And one of the things is it gets quite a bit of sun, but it still creates wines of absolute delicacy. Now, where it sort of protrudes out, uh, because it over, it was the, the Cote d'Or was the Jurassic um, Sea sort of beach and it overlooks where the Jurassic Sea was, all the weather sort of travels across, you know, and comes up through the Mackinac and actually goes along the ridge of the Cote d'Or and it seems to stop just a Volna. Now I've had um, plenty of meals in Pomada, um, Opera de Cluche, which is unfortunately closed now, which overlooks Volna, and we could see the storms actually come up and we'd think, oh, we're in for something here, but it would stop just on Volna. And Volna is incredibly susceptible to hail because of this reason. Uh, and Pomard uh, almost gets saved. So, you know, Volna, yeah, takes the brunt for Pomard quite a bit, uh, but the poor Volna producers get hit the hardest out of everyone uh, when it comes to hail. So quite often uh, dramatically uh, reduced yields, which is um, not ideal when you're trying to make a living. Right, oh, so the sauce is reduced to a you know, sort of slightly sort of syrupy uh, consistency. And we are going to take it off in a moment. Now, I'll just point something out first. The trick to duck breast is on a cold pan, score it. Now with this particular dish, I have uh, ground up 30 grams of Szechuan pepper. Now I'm doing three more when we go back down to the house. So I haven't put all 30 grams on this one, but I have made this enough sauce for four breasts. Now, it's, it, this is a great dish. I mean, French cooking uh, is great because it's all about balance and you can clearly see um, you know, what goes with what, what cuts through, you know, sweetness and fat and that sort of thing. You know, we had the, the, the grapes and the, and the white wine and the sugar reduced down initially and had a beautiful sweetness. Then the stock and the red wine had a little bit of bitterness and sort of dryness and a little bit more acidity. Now, I've just tasted that, uh, the sauce and now it's reduced. It's, you know, sickly sweet. But the Szechuan, yeah, particularly when it was in the mortar and pestle, just had this beautiful sort of fragrance. And it's amazing. I think that they are just going to, you know, the Szechuan will just cut through that sweetness and just beautifully. And I think the sweetness will lift the aromatics of the Szechuan beautifully. So we will take that off. Now, cold pan. Now, reason being is because you want, uh, you don't want to seal it straight away and keep the fat in the skin. You know, there's a lot of fat in that skin. You want it to sort of bleed out. So no oil, no butter, I know. Straight on the pan and just let it warm up gradually. And quite slowly actually, so I'm just going to turn it down a little bit more. Now, usually you do sort of six minutes, six to sort of uh, nine minutes on the skin side from um, a low heat. Now, this is a cast iron pan, so it might take sort of 10 minutes and then you do uh, two to four minutes on the other side and then you put it in the oven for six to get uh, medium rare. However, because we are up here, we are going to do maybe 10, we'll see how that pan heats up and how quickly. Uh, we'll then we'll flip it over and uh, cook it for a few minutes. Uh, but while we do that, we will put a lid over it to try and get through and warm up the flesh in the middle so we can do medium rare with a good temperature inside without having to cook it through. So now let's talk about the vineyard of Soroche and the winemaking. Now the winemaking, it's his first vintage. Now, Already, so I've had, th well, I've tasted three vintages from uh, Maxime Dubois Boyot so far. Uh, the 16 and 17, which we've got in the warehouse, and 18, which will be our next vintage. Now, he started off uh, with 25% whole, uh, whole bunch, and now in 18, he's actually gone up to almost 100%. Now, reason being is because he's seeing quite a bit of that sort of sweet fruit character, and he wants to balance it out. He's Grapes are getting ripe, so he feels like he can actually play with the stems a little bit more. You know, stems, when they're handled well, are magnificent. When they're not handled well, uh, are a catastrophe. So, 
let's have a little taste and explain what we're seeing here in terms of the wine making. The nose is incredibly pure, but the hallmark of the nose isn't just that beautiful sweet fruit. What keeps that together is this sort of very sort of mineral nose clenches the jaw. Now that's because Sir Roche, where this is, is on the northern half, right up the top of the hill, just below the forest, just above Premier Cru, Clos de Duc, uh, and uh, Pature. So two incredibly good vineyards, particularly Clos de Duc, which is the monopole of uh, the Marquis d'Angerville. Um, and it's Marquis d'Angerville, uh, um, Clos de Duc, and Pature. And just above it is uh, Sir Roche. Now Pature literally means muddy. So high on the slope, usually that wouldn't be the case, but there are a couple of springs just below it, uh, or just, just, just above Petua, just below Sir Roche. Now Sir Roche is on this uh, incredibly sort of soft limestone. Perfect, because it retains the moisture, which is usually quite a, um, a difficult thing to do when you're right up on the top, right by the forest. Now, it's an incredibly steep vineyard. Well, it starts off not too bad, and then it gets dramatically steep as soon as it gets to Clos de Duc and uh, Petua. But it overlooks from the north of the village, um, up the comb. Uh, it was not so much of a comb, it's just a bit of a sort of an indent where the village is. And you can really see why they put the village there to just protect itself from the storms that come up uh, from, from the south. And for overlooking from Sir Roche, you can see just the southern end of Bone, but then right down the coat, you know, so you've got Merso, the next village, then you've got Pulini Monarchet, then you've got Sussan Monarchet, then you've got Santanay. So you can see it all sort of, you know, sort of curve around like that. So it's really quite special. So very sort of southeast facing, which is perfect. Um, uh, like a beautiful sort of soft limestone, high, quite cool, but it gets the sun. That's just coming along nicely. Beautiful, it's down nice and low. You can see the fat just oozing out because the pan, there's no other oil there. Oh, and that Szechuan is just magnificent. Now, back to the wine. It's a very floral nose, very mineral. You know, limestone and pith and minerality, as well as beautiful red fruits. The wine's a touch cold. I had the first glass in the house, it's probably about eight degrees out here at the moment, because we've been cooking for so long. It's just got a little bit cold. But on the palate, it's very much that sort of limestone, taut, long, you know. There's no overwhelming power in Volnay ever, but there is persistence. And there's definitely power without weight. Volnay is one of my favorite red wine villages. It's like Chambord Musigny, but much more affordable. And I always have this fine structure and this perfume just a lovely wine, and I cannot wait for this duck to finish so we can put it on the chopping board, top it up, put a bit of that sauce on and try it with this wine. All right, so I did jump the gun a little bit because I, uh, well, between you and I, I ran out of battery. So I've taken off the uh, duck breast and I have put a little bit of the sauce and the grapes so now i'm quite sparing with the sauce because it is quite strong the grapes have this little burst of freshness and aren't actually that sweet compared to the sauce so let's uh let's delve in a little sippity do oh mamma mia <laughs> Mm. Now, here you guys. Right. Right, that's good. Right, that is beautiful. And the Szechuan takes away from all the overt sweetness. The grapes have this burst of freshness, you know, it's cooked in the volna itself and the grapes are there. 
So nothing about it is overwhelming. You know, the whole time I was sort of thinking, ah, oh, you know, maybe this will be overwhelming. But funnily enough, this dish actually has flavours of good volna. You know, the red, the, the red wine reduction with the grapes and the sort of the, the honeyed and a little bit of lemon citrus and then the, you know, the sort of the, the, the dark fat flavours, which, which can often sort of be seen in sort of bacon fat flavours in, in, in oak, like careful oak management. And then the uh, Szechuan spice particularly. Oh. I mean, that is lovely. Well, there you go. That is absolutely delicious. Duck breast, cooked in Szechuan pepper, in a, what was supposed to be a gooseberry sauce, but turned out to be a grape, red wine, and lemon sauce. Beautiful. Couldn't be happier, and we will see you next week.